Okay, so just going to have a bit of a fun video. We're going to build one of these open Xenia mod chips for the original Xbox. It is an open source recreation of an old mod chip for the original Xbox called Xenium. Um, I recreated the CPLD code. Uh, this handles the interface between the LPC bus on the Xbox and uh, this parallel flash memory to load a custom BIOS and also handles IO read and writes. So it has, a, has an RGB LED and uh, an SPI interface and an external RGB header on here. So it does a few things. Uh, also has all the BIOS banking so you can have multiple banks. And one of the cool things about the Xenium chip is the operating system on there. So with the operating system, you can uh, boot that up before the uh, retail kernel and you can do some cool stuff, do some backup your EEPROM and recover various things, change what uh, bias you want to boot from. So it's a pretty cool little thing. Um, recommend you check this GitHub page out, it has heaps of information, talks about what uh, all the features are and everything like that. So this is basically what it looks like when it's installed and uh, I'm going to build one in this video. So to get started, check out the hardware uh, folder first. And uh, it talks about uh, getting the printed circuit board made and it has a bill of materials. So you can just use this link here, but all the parts are listed here individually uh, with part numbers. So you can either use DigiKey, which is a reputable supplier, or you can source them wherever you want. But that link here, Builds up a whole shopping cart for you, ready to go, everything you need. 20 Australian dollars. Uh, this is enough parts to build one. So obviously, the more you build, generally the cheaper it gets. And so that's all the hardware you need. And obviously you also need to get the PCB manufactured. Um, nice high res photo for reference. Um, another thing you will need for this process is Xenium tools. So uh, this is just a program I wrote to support this and it allows you to uh, read and write the, the flash chip on the Xenium device. So um, alternatively, you could use an external parallel chip programmer, but this just uses um, the Xbox's LPC bus basically to, to read and write the flash chip, so it's a bit easier. Uh, another cool thing with this, it can actually be used on a genuine Xenium to do various things. Um, you can uh, fix a corrupt flash chip, for example, if you happen to break your Xenium. All right, so to get the, everything you need, so obviously the bill of materials was in the hardware page. If you go to release, um, it has everything you need to get started. So to get your PCB made, download this Gerber.zip you send it off to any old PCB fab house and uh, they can make a bunch for you super cheap these days. The five bucks, you can get 10 of them. Um, these obviously have no components on there, so you need to buy the components separately and solder it yourself, which we'll be doing in this video. Uh, you can download a skin ready to go. You will need this um, .jed file. This is what you use to program the CPOD. So use this when you're using a Xilinx JTAG programmer and in conjunction with the Xilinx ISE impact program to program it. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. If you have a generic JTAG programmer that can read SVF files, this is what you need to use instead. So they're the two you need. Uh, Xenium tools, the XBE file, so transfer that over to your Xbox. And when you do that, you also transfer over the uh, Xenium OS update files. You can just download those from the internet. Um, they have a file name recovery.bin when you download them. Uh, make sure you get version 2.3.1. That's the only version that's supported. Alternatively, chuck a, a working Xenium chip in your Xbox, run this program, and then you can dump the flash contents of your working Xenium, and then it will just mirror that onto um, the open Xenium. So once you get all those files on your PC, you're ready to get started. Um, 
there's anything else I want to talk about. We'll see if you're, you know, like-minded like me and you want to check out the schematic. Feel free to open it up, have a look. Let me know what I did wrong. Always open to feedback, suggestions, open source project. But I so say I recommend going through this repo, a lot of cool stuff. Um, all, the, all the source code for the CPLD is in the firmware folder. So if you're ever on the fence about trying some VHDL, definitely a fun project to try. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump jump into uh, the soldering. Um, just back on this picture of it being installed, you just notice um, this wire here going to the D0 pad. Everyone who's done a bit of modding on the Xbox will know that to make the Xbox boot from the LPC bus, which is just hidden by this header, instead of the onboard TSOC flash memory, you need to ground the uh, D0 line of this chip. So the MCPX will then attempt to read it, think it's corrupt, and then jump over to the LPC. So um, when you are programming the Open Xenium, I recommend you just connect that to ground. Um, it just makes it easier uh, during the hot swap process, which we'll go into a bit. Um, and then after you finish it, you transfer it over to this pad up here. And um, the only difference between this and ground is if you have it here, you can boot from the TSOF flash memory um, from the Xenium OS menu. Uh, another thing, if you um, have a 1.6 version Xbox, you need to obviously rebuild the LPC bus by reconnecting all the LAD lines and clock back to the LPC header. And you bring L frame up on pin, this pin here. And then you just have to solder the wire between this pad and this pad. Um, and that will do the proper L frame management for that stuff. So. That just interrupts the L-frame signal between the MCPX and the Zyklops, which is not shown in this picture, but it's normally about here. And that will allow it to boot from this mod chip. Okay, um, information overload, but let's get started. Okay, so I'm just going to start soldering this up. It's got a real simple little setup here. Got some solder, some tweezers, flux. So your soldering iron, I've got a box of bits next to me. And I've got a CPLD and a flash chip ready to go. Okay, so uh, chip is all being soldered up. So it is ready to have the CPLD programmed and then the flash chip program. So I've got my Xilinx JTAG Promat programmer here ready to go. And I've fired up the Xbox uh, using another working chip. So it just happens to be one of my other Xenium chips, but it can be any chip. And I've loaded up the Xenium tools program ready to go. So 
what you need to do here is just carefully when you're at the main menu of Xenium tools pull this chip out off the header and then grab this new chip and carefully just install it on the header okay so a blank CPLD will have a white LED by default so what I normally do to program here so the JTAG connections along along this edge here so it's the bottom five points sorry six points and what I've done here on my JTAG programmer is I've just grabbed all the connections and put them on a pin header in the right order so literally what I, all I do is um, put the let's see, sit it sit it in the header and then I just kind of hold it on a bit of an angle when I'm programming so I'll jump to the programmer now but that's basically what I do to program it okay so we're ready to program the CPLD um, I've got my um, Xbox fired up uh, the JTAG programmer is ready to go and it's in the pin header on the chip so I've got Xenium tools program open I've also got Xilinx ISE impact which is what I use to program the chip so with the programmer in the header all I do is right click go initialize chain um, so you can see it's detected the um, CPLD and it's asking if I want to sign a configuration file yes so it's looking for a um, JED file so you can get that from my um, github page for this so this is the one I've just downloaded select that and these are generally okay verify raise before programming yep that's good okay so with the um, just holding the pin headers on angle a little bit just to make sure all they all the connections touch and just right click here go program go and there we go so now the LED on this the um, on the chip here it should have changed red so that is a good sign that it programmed okay not guaranteed but good start uh, if it doesn't uh, try reprogramming it something wrong somewhere okay so now that it's programmed uh, grab your Xbox controller and in Xenium tools program if you hit the back button you see it does a little check for Xenium you should be getting Xenium detected at this point if you're not getting that um, there's something wrong with your soldering or the chip or somewhere so to, to detect the Xenium it reads the flash chips device IDs so if it's not getting anything there possible your flash chip is not soldered right or the interface between them or the chips dodgy or something that's going on so go back and check that if it's getting detected it's a good start you can press a and you can cycle the rgb led to different colors so you can do that as a quick check just to make sure that's working and also another sign that it's programmed okay so in terms of writing the flash chip with xenium os you've got a couple options um, you can write a Xenium OS update file. They're the files you can kind of download off the internet. They're called recovery.bin. They're traditionally used to update your Xenium OS version, but this can extract the right data out of that um, and write it to your chip. So just have the recovery.bin in the same directory as this XBE. Um, it only supports version 2.3.1. Uh, the alternate is writing a raw two megabyte flash dump of a, another Xenium device that you have. So it's two megabyte file. That's what I'm going to use. So uh, press start dot b for that. So this needs to have a flash dot bin located in the same directory as XB, XBE. So start and b uh, starts the process and it's ready to erase. So press black to erase. And then it will start this process, which can take uh, a little while. OK, 
Okay, so the arrays has completed. It's starting to write now. You can monitor the progress here. Okay, once it's written, it just reads it back, does a verification, doesn't take too long. And hopefully you get verification successful. <clears throat> if you don't, there's something wrong somewhere in your soldering or the flash chip or something, so just check that. Okay, so now that it's done, you can press back, go back to the main menu, nothing, nothing really left to do here. Uh, now you should be able to turn the Xbox off and press the eject button to fire it back up. If you watch the RGB LED on the chip, it should go through a bit of a cycle and should fire up to ZMOS. So there we go. Uh, mine happens to boot to this open Xenium skin. Yours probably will not do that. Uh, only doing this because the raw flash dump I use is ready set up to use it, and I have this skin in the already loaded on the extra hard drive. So yeah, I hope that made sense. Um, I recommend you have a good read of the GitHub page for this. It has heaps of information. Talks about how to make your own skins and uh, some other cool stuff. Um, and that's that's it really. Uh, good luck with your build. Let me know how it goes. And I'll see you next time.